Hi, and welcome back to a beautiful, beautiful day here in Colorado. Y'all, my house right now is at 81 degrees and I am loving it. When I tell you I love this, oh my goodness, I am loving this 80 degrees in my home. I have all of my windows open. Everyone is gone. I'm here alone. That's the only reason I can keep it at the 80 because my husband and my daughter, it's hot. Oh my God, I am so loving this right now. And I know the girls are loving it. I know I know my girls are loving this warm weather. Um, so to today's video, and if you hear traffic, I do live on a major street. And like I said, I do have all of my windows open. So if I can't edit that out during the editing process, I apologize ahead of time, but I'm not closing my windows. Into who? So I've been talking about taking my Hawaiian treat off of this flimsy mount and putting it on a really nice piece of cork mount. So I purchased this cork mount, which is um, 14 to 18 inches by six to 10 inches wide. I believe it was 20 bucks and I've already cut it, but let me move my coffee out of the way real quick and move this lady out the way so you can see. I mean, it is a nice piece. I mean, that's not a bad price. For a nice big piece unless you're of course um, mount all of your orchids then you would probably want to buy in bulk but as I don't mount all of my orchids and I wanted this kind of cork for my lady over here I got this so I had my husband cut off the piece that I want so I will move these two out of the way sorry if it shakes and I went ahead and I did her like I do most of my other orchids. I went ahead and I soaked her in some cow mag. She's been pretty much soaking all morning. And the first thing I want to do, obviously, is we're gonna cut this wire, which it's just floral wire um, that I used, but she has lots of new root tips growing off of a lot of her growths. So I want to go ahead and get her remounted while I have those new roots to kind of support her in the event that she decides she wants to drop the roots that she has because as you can see, she is both a bifoliate as well as a monofoliate. So let me take some of this old moss off so I can see where the wire is. So like I said, I'm trying not to unwind it. I just want to kind of cut the wire and move the wire out of the way. How is everyone else's weather so far in the world, not just in the United States, but here in the world? Um, here in Colorado this weekend, so Saturday and Sunday, it's supposed to rain and possibly a light snow. So once I am 100% certain that there is not going to be any more snow in the forecast, I'm going to move the girls that I want to grow outside this year. I'm going to go ahead and set them up outside. And I have been playing around with different ideas. So I think what I might do is get one of those like gate pergolas, you know, the little small ones, and set that up outside. And then this way I can, if I need to, put like a little light curtain on the pergolas to help protect them from any really bright sun because I've been kind of watching in my yard and where I originally wanted them, it's too much sun. And even though it's really breezy back there, I'm afraid that it still is not going to be enough of a breeze to keep the leaves cooled off. And I don't want them to get sunburned, obviously. So where I'm thinking of putting them now, I think the little small gate pergola thing will look really nice. Let's see, no, we have another, nope, we don't have a wire there. Let me get this wire right here. And I'm thinking I might cut some of the old growth off as well, just to kind of be able to position her on the mount a little bit better. Haven't quite decided, have to wait till I take her off to see. Let's see, and yeah, let's take this strap off. <clears throat> because right now, see, she's just coming right off of this, yeah. And, yeah, see, as you can see, all of those roots in the back are dead, which is expected because that is where the older, older growth is. And I am going to go ahead and take that one off. And let's cut this one, maybe. Let me see. 
I'll leave that one. That's a good one. So yeah, we'll just take this other one right here off. And I'm just gonna use my scissors instead of Fiskars. Maybe if I can get through it. There we go. All right. So that, oh, that actually took off. Ah, oh, two new growths. That's okay. I will stick those somewhere on the new mount with this. Okay, so get all of this off and let's see what we are left with. And as you can see, she's got lots of new growth as well as lots of new root growth. And with bifoliates and my experience, I have realized you really want to wait for those. Um, I used to think it was a myth, but no, guys, it's true. It's true. All right, so as you can see, there's a lot of dead roots that need to come off of here. So I'm going to pause it for a real quick second. Go ahead and get all these roots cut off, and then we'll come back and see what we're left with. I will be right back. All right, so we are back. And here is what I am left with on her roots. Not too bad, not too shabby. Like I said, she's got a lot of new roots coming in. And I've already figured out how I want to put her on the mount. Originally, and I did have one casualty. I thought that was dead, and that's okay. So it's to be expected. But originally, I wanted to put her on like this here. But then I realized the back still doesn't, whoops, the back still doesn't touch the way I want it to. So I turned it around with a little dip down. And because it has this nice little groove action here, if I set, let's see if I can get it back on there. If I set her stem kind of into that groove section, then she will sit up against the mount a little bit better once I put her on there. So let's, let's just double check this before I, I commit to this one. I've been sitting here playing around with it for a while. Let's see, yeah, like that. If I set her like that, it's gonna be so many new growths right here where I wanna put my thumb. And then this way the stem will sit in here up against, and then this the older growth will sit up against the cork. Yep, so that's the way I'm going to do it. Final decision. And then I went ahead and drilled a hole, if I can find it. There it is. It's in this, in this groovy area here. So I'm going to go ahead and set up the wire for hanging her before I put her on the mount. Some people do it before, some people will do it after. It just all depends on what works for you. I suppose. Let's see if I can finagle it through. I hope I made it big enough. I didn't want too giant of a hole. Okay, maybe not that way. Let's see if we can get her in this way. Yes, it's a little better that way. There we go. All right. I don't need a lot of it because where she is going to be hanging is the same exact spot she's been hanging in. So only thing I'm changing is she is getting put on a new mount with some fresh moss. And I'm hoping that these new roots will go into the media so that she can stay hydrated enough. And just wrap that around. All right, and so, how do you do your mounts? Do you do your hook before or after? I, I think it works, for me, it works better if I do it before. This way the plant's not in the way. And then I will just bring it down here. There we go. And there we go. And then twist it, and voila, I have Oh, I guess you can't really see it with the thing, but I have my little hook. Now the fun part. So I do have some nice fresh moss here that I've not put anything into yet. It's a new, a new block that has been absorbing just plain water, nothing in it. And what I'm going to do to attach 
the orchid herself is I am going to use a strap of Velcro to hold her on there and then I'm going to use the wire the florist wire in order to maybe she needs to go this way yes we'll do her this way in order to hold the moss on because I don't want any wires on her and cutting into her growths and possibly opening up pathogens for her. So let's put right about, no, see, right about there. And let me just bring it around here. And then I will. Some people use zip ties. Um, to mount their orchids. I think that's a cool idea. I didn't have any zip ties. I was actually gonna gonna do that, but I didn't have any. So see, she actually sits on the mount. Let me move this up just a bit so you can see. She actually sits on the mount with just the Velcro attached to her. But as we can see, the back of her is now a little more flush with the mount. Whereas with this other one, this one, she was about that far away from it so I'm wondering if that's why the roots that she was growing were not attaching themselves now the question is let's, I didn't I didn't make a hole to start my wire I was trying to be more prepared when I came back Did you guys hear that wind blowing through the house it's just stunning stunning and it has now risen to 82 degrees in the short amount of time that it took me to go do what I did. So, like I said, if my family was here, there's no way that they would accept 80 degrees in the house. But they are gone for most of the day, so Trish said, you know what? I'm going to turn off the air conditioning unit or the AC unit. I don't know if it was on air or heat turn it off and then from there I'm going to open up all the windows so, um, and 80 degrees this early in the year is really strange in Colorado oh there goes my front door I didn't uh, I didn't prop it open and the wind blew it I have a nice window in the kitchen that when the front door is open there's a nice crosswind but that door just decided it was going to slam all right, so now let's see if I can get this one threaded through. Let me find my hole. Where did I put it? I just did all that work, guys, and I have no idea where the hole is. Okay, well, let's try it from the back again, see if we can do that. Because I see where it came through. Just don't. Oh, there it goes. It's coming out the other side. It is. All right, so because we have the new growth, let me prop her up. I do not want anything to happen to any of those new growths. And I will just twist this back here, my start point. Doesn't have to be super snug. I'm gonna go this way with it. All right, and then Let's see, she's not going to need a whole, whole lot of moss, but this little pack right here looks very nice. And I'm going to first pick this up and kind of tuck it, if I can, up under her a little bit, just so there's more moisture in there. And I am in no way an expert on mounting no way at all. I only have a few of my orchids on mounts and so far they're all doing pretty good but as I just said I am no expert on how to mount an orchid. But if this looks like something that would work for you go ahead and try it. Let me know if you tweak anything if you find things that work a little bit better. That would be much appreciated. Because I am actually also considering putting some of my mounts outside this year just to see what they do. Because as everyone knows, 
the more natural of an environment you can give any plant, but especially an orchid, the better they will do. And I do want to get a little bit tucked in there without it. All right, so there is that. And then I'm going to lay some right on top. And this is the, um, the long strain sphagnum moss, uh, New Zealand sphagnum moss. Um, I order mine off of Amazon. I don't know where everyone gets theirs, but I like to get mine off of Amazon. I have found that to be the best place to get them. And I'm just, it looks like a lot, but it's really just a really light layering to help encourage the new roots that are coming out to go down into the media and not up into the air. A little bit. Let's see if I can. I'm trying to find patches, like pieces that are kind of already kind of stuck together instead of separating it so that when I put it on here, let me make sure when I tie that, does not break those two new roots. There we go. All right. Well, let's get her wrapped up and see what we've got here. And just going to go right over the bottom careful of that root right there and there and then I'm going to go under these two roots here and I'm not doing it very tightly I'm doing it just enough to hold this moss in place so that when I hang her oh, uh, 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 go back over there when I hang her, it doesn't all fall off onto a le floor. Because then that would kind of be defeating the purpose of what we're trying to do here, isn't it? Looks like I am at the end of my wire. So, with that, uh, I'm going to have to... Oops. Again, I really don't want to lay her down because I don't want any of... The new growth to get messed up, so we'll set her right there. And then what I like to do is go loop it under here, and then pull it, and then I loop it under all of the wire in the back if I can. This one's kind of hard because normally I would just lay the orchid down so that I could use two hands, but I'm trying to do this in a different way, and it's not one. There it goes. All right. Those are tightened. And I'll show you at the end what I was talking about as far as getting everything wrapped together. Maybe she'll stay right there for me just long enough. A root casualty I will accept. A new growth casualty I, I don't think I can. All right. There we go. And then just push wrapping it here. Does anybody else do that? Sit there and chat with themselves, walk themselves through what they're doing. Like that's going to help. Like you're, you're your own cheerleader. But see what I did is I connected all of my loops into a center point and then I'm just going to press the wire back up against the mount just to kind of help tighten it some more. And then here's what we have. And then any pieces that fall off naturally when I water, I'm okay with that. Um, matter of fact, some of these we can probably just go ahead and there we go. All right, so I like the way that turned out. I really do. This way, these new roots hopefully will go down into the moss to help hydrate her a little bit better because I think that was part of her problem and she is sitting very well across there. And just tuck that little piece in there. But I like it. What do you guys think? She looks much better on the bigger mount, too. She doesn't look like she's taken over. This this is this is what she was on, and this is what she went on to. So I like this mount much better. It's, it's a much prettier mount, too. So, Well, guys, I thank you for joining me and going along my journey of remounting my lovely BCT Hawaiian treat. Here, I will just show her to you real quick. Here we go. And if I can find picture of her, I will post her blooms. Her blooms in the pictures look a little more yellow. Um, I don't know why. I don't know if it was just the lighting when I took the pictures, but it's not a deep yellow. It's a, I mean, yellow-orange, 
Um, it's kind, it's, it is kind of a yellow orange, but it's more orange than yellow. Hopefully she'll bloom for us this season and we'll be able to see her uh, blooms again. I have noticed as well that although she is a bifoliate as well as a monofoliate grows both, the bloomings have only come off of the monofoliate leaf, um, growth. So I have one, two monofoliates right now. This one will probably not bloom simply because she is starting a new growth. But then again, I've only had her since July of last year. So I don't know if she works her new growth and will produce a bloom because she just keeps spitting out new growths and I haven't gotten any blooms yet. So we'll have to wait and see what she does. I hope everyone continues to have a fabulous day. I know I am going to enjoy my hot house, as my family likes to call it when I'm alone, and I will see you on the next one.